Welcome. Welcome, one and all, back to The Late Show. My first guest tonight is a doctor and presidential Medal of Freedom winner who you know from his guidance through the COVID-19 pandemic. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Nice to see you again, Doctor. Good to be with you, Stephen. Always, uh, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to have you on. I gotta say, you are a spry, 83 years old. Have you? <laughs> have, have you thought about running for president? <laughs> no. No. No interest whatsoever. <laughs> well, you ser you served under six, seven, 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 seven presidents. presidents. Okay. Um, politicization of science. Is dangerous, but it's not a new thing. Right. Um, this has happened in the past. You've dealt with it in the past. Have Have you seen anything like the way it is now, yeah. though? Because certainly, uh, just a few days ago, your testimony down in Washington D.C. made headlines for the hostility that you received. Right. Is 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 this even for your long and storied career and being involved with all these politicians? Does this seem like something new to you? Quite new and disturbing. Um, back. When I first became director uh, of the institute, which was, you know, I've been director, I had been director for almost 40 years. In the beginning, there was always politics. You know, there was people of different ideology. There was center, center left, center right. They disagreed and they, you know, sometimes would argue with each other. But at the end of the day, there was civility and respect for each other. What we're seeing now is what you had mentioned, Stephen. It's it's vitriol and pure hostility. So. I would get questioned in a very strict, pushing way, maybe back in other administrations. But at the end of the hearing, they would come over to you and say, you know, good job, you know, sorry that we had to be tough with our questionings, but, you know, we want to get to the right place. Now it's pure attack, which is totally different. It's just, I believe, a reflection of the profound degree of divisiveness in the country, which is very destructive. Okay, well, you know, you're, you're a doctor. If you were going to diagnose <laughs> America as a patient right now. Yeah. How would how would you diagnose this? What's our what's what's our give it to me straight, doc. <laughs> I think you need a surgeon, not an internist. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little can well, something needs to come out. <laughs> what about like what what about what if, as if you were a psychologist, what yeah, might you, you say know, about it? There, there is a degree of schizophrenia in the country. I mean, it, it's just it really is. I mean, the, the, how far apart people can be that they seem to forget how much alike we are, but we're acting like we're so, so different. Uh, and that's... Conspiracy has, has such uh, a big part of the public yeah. conversation right now, seeing patterns where none exist. Yes. Or, 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 or adding things together right. into a conspiracy that is uh, unlikely. For instance, the, there is a, a belief in being, being uh, pushed by some of the people who are questioning you in Congress about... The, the idea that your approval of a grant that went to a company that gave some of the money to the Wuhan lab created, uh, uh, used gain of function to change the, the nature, the virality of certain coronaviruses that became COVID-19, so you're to blame for COVID-19. Yes, and I also did it so I could make a billion dollars from the vaccines. Oh, right. Yeah. So you, the yeah. idea is that you already yeah. had a deal yeah. Yeah. Right. with, like, Pfizer and Moderna and AstraZeneca and everything. Right. Yeah. So how much of that is true? 90%, 95%? Give me a round number. <laughs> it, it, could, could the coronavirus have been developed at Wuhan as part of a gain-of-function yeah. study? Uh, well, not not from the grant that was given by the NIH to study the viruses that they were studying. Because Why not? The nature of those viruses that were studied were evolutionarily so far distant from what turned out to be SARS-CoV-2 that no matter what you did with those viruses, you would not be able to do that. That doesn't mean that somewhere in China it is conceivable that someone may have been working on something, bringing it out from the environment. That's the reason why we keep an open mind as to what the cause of it is. Okay, so why, so that that's it. Okay, so a lot of controversy about what the cause or what the origin right. of it is. Um, a, why is it so important that we know? And B, is there anything new that we've learned recently? No, well, first of all, it's important to know uh, because you want to make sure you put into place 
things that would prevent that from happening again. So since we unlikely will know because of the real dissociation of any cooperation between China and the United States. Their processes over there are a black box to us. We yeah, can't yeah. See. I mean, we're, we're, we're not, and, and the hostility between the countries is such that there's not going to be cooperation. So if you say it's one or the other, it's either a lab leak or it's a natural occurrence. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, and in the opinion of most virologists who understand the process, it is much more likely, though not definitive, that it was a natural occurrence from jumping from an animal into a human at the Wuhan market. But since it's not definitive, there's still a possibility that somewhere in China, something was going on where people brought in a virus from the environment and it escaped from the lab. So given that there are two possibilities, the way to do it is try to prevent both of those possibilities from happening again. Put better constra constraints on the kinds of experiments, make sure that there's good facilities to do it, people are well-trained, and do something about the animal-human interface because it is 75 to 80 percent of the new viruses and infections that come out are what we call zoonotic. They jump from an animal model, an animal reservoir to a human. We saw that with HIV AIDS. We've seen that with, with, with influenza. We see that with Ebola. So that's not something that is unusual. That happens a fair amount. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more. Dr. Anthony Fauci, everybody. Stick around.